Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about the new supply, okay? And a lot of people have questions about the new supply. They say, oh, the narcissist, they jumped into a relationship so fast, you know? We weren't even broken up a month and they're in a relationship and or they got engaged after two months of being broken up with me. Well, I'm going to explain why that happens, all right? First of all, you got to understand something. Most of the time, the new supply is not new. The new supply, a lot of times, is their exes, okay? They were still in contact with their ex, but they came along and they told you they were single. Or the other thing that happens is that, you know, they're on a break with their ex. They don't tell you, you know, they're still with somebody or they're emotionally attached to somebody. And you're thinking this person is completely single and they're not. See, a narcissist nine times out of 10 is never completely single when you meet them, okay? Usually they have something going on. They have a connection to somebody, even if it's just a situationship where they're still sleeping with somebody. But then they come along they mislead you. They give you a false impression like, you know, oh, I'm completely single. Yeah, no, I, I'm single. When in fact, they're not emotionally and sometimes physically not single. A lot of times too, the reason that, you know, they go back to their exes or their exes, their new supply is because what happens is the narcissist in their prior relationship might have done something really bad to their ex, okay? Maybe their ex caught them cheating or maybe their ex saw they were lying or gaslighting them and then the ex got really fed up and, you know, broke up with the narcissist, but now the narcissist can't let it go. They're still trying to get back with their ex, but as we know with narcissists, they can't be alone. They've always got to have somebody. So, a lot of times what happens is when they get involved with somebody new, all right, they are still not completely emotionally available, okay? So the new supply has no clue that the narcissist was still talking to their exes. And the lies that the narcissist tells the new supply one of the lies they tell the new supply is that their ex was cheating on them. They love to say their ex is cheating on them, okay? They always blame shift, and it's always someone else's fault, and they want, they want to play the victim, okay? They constantly play the victim with their ex, about their exes. Another thing that they lie about to the new supply is they tell the new supply their ex was crazy, all right? What better way to, you know, justify why they're broken up is to say that their ex was crazy instead of, you know, owning it and being clear about it and saying they drove their ex, if anything, to be crazy because they gaslit them so much and they confused them. The other lie that a narcissist says about the new supply is they say, oh, their exes are still stalking them. When in fact, it's the narcissist that is still stalking their exes trying to hold on to that ex, constantly trying to hold on to that ex because narcissists hate being abandoned and they may have gotten some kind of supply off that ex, all right? So the new supply is being manipulated, all right? And the old supply is also being manipulated. So the narcissists, what they do is they play both sides to the middle, all right? That's why a lot of times what they'll do is they could be with a new supply and they could reach out to you. And it's not that they're even leaving the new supply. They have no intentions of leaving the new supply, but they want that ego boost. They want to know that you still care, okay? Maybe they want you as a side thing. So they'll reach out to their exes and they'll say, how you been? Or I've been thinking about you. Meanwhile, they're still in a whole new relationship with somebody else, okay? the new supply, and they're reaching out to you. And you're thinking they're coming back because they really care when in fact they don't really care about you because if they really cared about you, they would have tried to work it out with you, okay? But narcissists don't care. As long as they could replace you, they don't care. So the thing is this, you guys, 
And the other question that I get all the time about the new supply, people ask, well, should I warn the new supply? Should I let them know how toxic the narcissist is? And the answer to that is no, okay? No, mind your business, all right? Why? Because you're going to be labeled as desperate. You're going to be looked at as, you know, trying to get the narcissist back. You're going to just reconfirm everything the narcissist tells the new supply, how you're crazy or you can't get over them. So by you reaching out to the new supply, what do you think the new supply is going to do? They're going to go back and tell the narcissist everything you said, and then things could get really, really heated. And if you're dealing with a narcissist who could be violent, you could have real big problems, all right? And you just don't need this in your life. The other thing too is the new supply is not going to believe you. Why? Because they've been manipulated by the narcissist to think that you're crazy. So if you go to them and you tell them, you know, how the narcissist is a liar, they're a cheater, they're a gaslighter, they're going to just think you're trying to break them up. They're not going to believe you. And they're not about to get rid of the narcissist because at that point, usually, you know, it's still the love bombing stage and the new supply is eating up all that lovey dovey shit. Okay. So do not reach out to the new supply. Mind your business. But what you do have to be aware of is the fact that you know, nor a narcissist is never usually ever completely single when they meet somebody. Okay. They still love bouncing back into their exes lives. And people ask me all the time, why do their exes take them back? Why do they put up with that? Well, because it could be a couple of reasons. Number one, they don't realize they're dealing with the narcissist and this is going to be a, a repeat cycle of behavior that the narcissist is just manipulating them and the narcissist is just trying to fool them that they care. They don't see the narcissist for who they truly are because the narcissist is killing them with, you know, love bombing and kindness and you know, there's a lot of lonely people in the world. And when somebody comes along and gives you that, you know, that attention and that flattery, you know, you love it so much that you go with it because you might be lonely, you might be vulnerable, and you become a target for the narcissist. See, vulnerable people are big targets for a narcissist because they can get they can manipulate them better because they're so hungry for that attention that that feeling of euphoria of being in love it's not love with the narcissist it's just you know them feeding the ego of that person or trying to make them feel like they are in love they're they're future faking they're building it up in their head when in fact that is not what the narcissist is about. You know, they're not transparent. They're building up a fake picture in that person's mind. And if you're a vulnerable person, you're going to eat, eat that up. All right. Like I've had so many clients that said to me, well, I kind of saw there were red flags there, but I kind of just wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt and just kind of go with it. All right. I just wanted to kind of go with it because it felt good. All right. See, when a narcissist comes into your life and they give you all that attention, they're blowing up your phone, they're keeping you on the phone for hours, they're so accommodating, they're consistent in the beginning, you know, and, and you've been out there and let's say you've had bad experiences, you know, because so many people treat you like options where they barely get back to you, they don't call you back, they're flaky, and here comes a consistent narcissist in the beginning you're going to, you know, if you're somebody who really wants to be in love with somebody or be in a relationship or, you know, is very lonely, you're going to be a target for the narcissist, okay? So this is how narcissists are able to get their way. They kill you, with, they play on your emotions, and they kill you with over-the-top kindness. And I did a reel on this, and I said, one of the biggest red flags, biggest red flags that you could be dealing with a narcissist is number one, it's too good to be true. And number two, they give you over the top kindness. They go out of their way more than a normal person would go. All right. And I had a few people get on the post because they really didn't get it. And they said, 
you well, I'm a, I'm a very nice person, and I'm not a narcissist, and there are very nice people out there. You know, not everybody that's nice is a narcissist. I'm talking about over-the-top nice to the point of fakeness, okay? Oh, my goodness. You know, some people, I tell you, they take every word literally without actually getting the concept of what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you've got to say to yourself, why is this person so over-the-top nice? Why is this person willing to go pick up my kids at school or take them to the doctor when they don't even know anything about me? They don't even know, you know, where I went to school. They don't know how many siblings I have. They haven't seen me mad, sad, depressed, nothing. But they're willing to do all these things over the top when they don't even know me, okay? That is a red flag. Normal people don't do that. People that may know you for a long time will do that because they care about you and they know you and they'll go out of their way for you. But the average Joe is not going to extend themselves to that point unless they have a, a mutual, a, a strong connection with you and they know you. All right. The only other person that would do that would be a fake narcissist because they see something in you that they want to use. Okay. Okay. Like I said, nobody is that nice out of the blue generally, and I'm talking over the top nice. We're not just talking about a nice person. We're talking about over the top nice unless they want to use you or they want something out of you, okay? It's common sense. This is real life experience, gang, all right? And this is why so many people get used, so many people get played. So the tool of the narcissist is flattery. Flattery, charm, play on your emotions, make you feel good, okay? That is the tool of the narcissist to get their way, okay? Now, understand this. Now, a lot of people also ask me when it comes to the new supply, they want to know when will the new supply see that the narcissist is toxic? Again, it depends on the new supply and how you know, how smart they are, how slick they are, how much they know the game. Now, a person could be a smart person and still get played, okay? It's not stupid people that get played. Very smart people, people with PhDs, intelligent, higher degree people get played, all right? What's the difference? These people didn't know the game. They may be book smart. They may be smart in other ways, but they didn't know the game, all right? That's the difference. That's why certain people get played and some people don't because they know that there are characters out there that will play upon your emotions to try to get something out of you. So when will the narcissist when will the new supply recognize, you know, that the narcissist is toxic? Usually the you know, after a few months in after the love bombing starts to, you know, get old with it and the narcissist is getting bored with the new supply or the narcissist is seeing that the new supply is not that great, that's when the narcissist may turn a little cold on the new supply. They're going to do the same exact thing they did to you to the new supply. Same exact thing, you guys. They may be able to love bomb longer if they're after something big, which is usually money or a place to live, then they could put on the act longer. But eventually a narcissist gets tired with it. They can't keep it up. Trust me when I tell you, they can't keep it up. And eventually their true core wicked self comes out. And that's when the new supply will see it. Okay. And if they're a smart person in the sense that they know about narcissism and they know about the game, they're going to see it a lot quicker, okay? And it also has to do with, you know, how desperate somebody is. A lot of times, a new supply, you know, they'll let things go. They don't have strong boundaries. If a person has low boundaries, they will last longer with the narcissist because they're going to end up letting them do what they want just so they have somebody, they're codependent on the narcissist and they don't want to let them go because they like having that person, even if they're toxic, they like having somebody because believe it or not, you guys, there's a lot of people in this world that put up with a lot of shit because they don't want to be alone. 
Being alone is like death to a lot of depressed people. So they'll put up with a toxic person, a toxic narcissist, just so they know that somebody's there. But what they don't realize is that this narcissist is going to slowly kill them, kill their emotional state, which is going to give them stress, which is going to affect their physical state as well. And that could cause, you know, major illnesses. So, you know, it's better to be alone and have peace than to deal with a narcissist who will upset your, your life. Why? Because nothing is ever enough for the narcissist. You cannot win with a narcissist. You just can't. Why? Because they're so empty. They're constantly, constantly trying to fill up that emptiness within themselves. So they're never happy. They're never satisfied and they'll never be satisfied with you. It's as simple as that. Okay. That's why you got to fly the flag and abandon ship. And when it comes to the new supply, kiss the ground and say, thank God I don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay. The narcissist is now the new supplies problem. But they will see in time. And when things aren't going good with the new supply, a lot of times that's when you hear from the narcissist, okay? That's when they come back and they may try to hit you up and see if they can weasel their way back in. And if they feel that they can't, they'll try to bounce to somebody else, all right? Now, another thing about the new supply that I want to add that a lot of people don't realize when a narcissist leaves you and they go to a new supply, which a lot of times is their exes or somebody that they've known the whole time they knew you, all right, understand that the narcissist is not just dealing with the new supply. Why? Because they don't just deal with one, all right? They always have to have backups. So you may sit there and you might be like, yo, oh, they left me there with the new supply. Oh, they look happy. Well, a narcissist doesn't trust, and they're not going to trust the new supply. So they're going to have a backup to the new supply, okay? So understand this. Again, it's going to be a repeat cycle of whatever you went through. Why? Because a narcissist is never happy, never satisfied, always looking for the next best thing. And, you know, they've always got to make sure that there's plenty of validation around. There's plenty of people to tell them how wonderful, how great they are. Now, another thing about new supply that a lot of people don't realize. A lot of times the new supply could be the narcissist flying monkey, okay? Sometimes the narcissist may have a homegirl or homeboy, uh, as a flying monkey, or a lot of times family is flying monkey. And these people work against you. Why? Because usually they're jealous of you. They're jealous of your relationship with the narcissist. And they are usually covert narcissists and they're troublemakers. So they'll start a lot of problems. And sometimes the flying monkey, the supporter of the narcissist, is somebody who, you know, likes the narcissist and is secretly jealous of you and will get with the narcissist, all right? Again, this could be, you know, their home girl or their home guy that they're close with, their buddy buddy with. A lot of times they could even be having situationships with their flying monkeys. So these flying monkeys are just as toxic, if not more toxic than the narcissist because they are the enablers of the narcissist. A narcissist doesn't work alone, all right? They've always got to have that support system, support system of flying monkeys, people that tell them that they're right, people that, you know, boost up their ego, um, flatter them in some cases, and these people, you know, if you're dealing with a narcissist who's very difficult, who's constantly always giving you a hard time, you can trust and believe there's a flying monkey in the background that's working against you. And sometimes in marriages, that's the in-laws. Those could be the flying monkeys as well, where they're, you know, talking badly about you in an indirect, passive-aggressive way to the narcissist, which is their son or daughter, and they're causing trouble. They're planting seeds in your partner's head to make you look like the bad guy, okay? And the narcissist doesn't realize that they're actually being manipulated by the flying monkeys because narcissists can be manipulated by the flying monkeys as well. 
So when you deal with a narcissist, you're not just dealing with the narcissist. You're dealing with the narcissist and their entourage, which is their flying monkeys or their exes, okay? And their ex too, like I said, their ex could be a new supply as well and could also be a flying monkey. Maybe they're still friendly with their ex. Maybe they go over there for coffee or they give you excuses and they say things like, oh, I'm just going over there to see the children or I'm just going to have dinner with my ex and the kids and everything like that. And it's a little too chummy, okay? It's a little too chummy. You know, when you see somebody that's really, really, you know, heavily connected to their ex, run, okay? Run. Don't walk, run. Because they are not emotionally available to be with you. And everything that you talk to with this person, they're going to discuss it with their exes. They're going to be talking about you to their exes. Narcissists love to triangulate. They love to bring other people into your problems. Like when you have a fight with a narcissist, What's the first thing that they're going to do? They're going to call up their flying monkey and badmouth you, okay? Why? Because they're insecure and they need somebody to tell them how awful you are and how right the narcissist is. So really, you guys, when you're dealing with a narcissist, understand you're not just dealing with them. You're dealing with the entourage, their enablers, their flying monkeys behind the scene. And sometimes these flying monkeys could be somebody who's a new supply down the road, who secretly likes the narcissist and is maybe their friend or very friendly to them. And they could be causing a lot of problems in your relationship because they might want to get with the narcissist, all right? So that's basically what you need to know about the new supply. Now, in some cases, a narcissist can last with a new supply and even get married to the new supply. And I've had people come back to me and say, Oh, well, you know, I don't think the narcissist is going to repeat that that cycle of abuse because, you know, they're they're the new supply is with them for a while and, you know, they're married a while and everything and they seem like they're happy and they're going to stay together for a while. And my response to that is that that person is putting up with a lot of abuse, a lot of shit, okay? Because anybody that could stay with the narcissist for many, many years, is putting up with a lot of narcissistic abuse, okay? Believe me when I tell you this, because I've seen it in long-term marriages, and that's why a lot of times long-term marriages break up after 20, 30 years, because it hits a breaking point. That person has had it. Maybe they have found out their partner cheated on them for the hundredth time, or they're just tired of walking on eggshells and they end up leaving the person after, let's say, 20 over 20 years because they've had enough. And you know what else, too, why they leave them? Because now they're getting older, now they're getting tired, and now the narcissist is affecting their health, okay? So don't think, you know, those marriages always last forever. If they do last forever then know that whoever the narcissist is in the relationship with for a long time or married to for a long time, they're putting up with a lot of shit, okay? And the narcissist is doing what they want on the side, okay? The narcissist, remember this, is never all in to one relationship. You know, they can be in, 99% of them cheat, There is a small percentage that aren't cheaters, but they always have something going on on their side, okay? Which means they could have secret meetings with people. They can have secret things going on. They hide money. Covert narcissists always have secret bank accounts, okay? Why? Because they don't trust, right? They want to protect themselves that today or tomorrow something doesn't work out. They're not taking a chance of you ever getting over on them. So a narcissist, I just did a post on this, and a narcissist is in a relationship with themselves. It's, it's a me, okay? When you're in a relationship with a narcissist, the narcissist, it's about them. It's not about we, okay? Narcissists don't look at you as two people coming together and being one flesh. They look at it like you versus me and what can you do for me, Okay? And also, they like controlling people. They always have to be 
you know, the captain of the ship. They've always got to call the shots. They've always got to tell you that you are doing something wrong so that they could feel like the authority on everything and make you feel inferior. They always have to feel superior to everybody else. So listen, when it comes to the new supply, understand this. Again, you ought to kiss the ground that you got rid of them. And, you know, now that problem narcissist is now somebody else's problem. And when the narcissist comes back to try to hoover you, you don't entertain the narcissist at all. Don't even get on the phone. Don't respond. No response. No response. They wasted enough of your time. You, you know, always think you, you, your ex is your ex for a reason. Remember that your ex is your ex for a reason. So they're not going to change. They are who they are. And, you know, let them live their life off into the merry sunset with whoever supply they end up having. And in time, people say, what happens to them? Well, over time, narcissists burn bridges over time, okay? And they end up with whatever is around. As they get older in life, they have less options and they cling on to whoever, you know, they could get at that time in that stage of life. And they'll be very bitter about it because they can't do all the things they used to do and they don't have all the supply they used to have, okay? One other thing I wanna bring up about the new supply that you guys should be aware of. In most cases, the new supply is a victim just like you're a victim because they didn't know what the narcissist was doing. They didn't know that the narcissist was still with you when they started up with the new supply. But there are cases where the new supply actually knew about you. And in that case, the new supply is narcissistic as well. Why is that? Because they have no empathy for you and they're starting up with the narcissist. This is a situation, let's say, where somebody might be married to the narcissist and they have, let's say, um, they have a mistress or they have somebody on the side that they're having a secret affair with on the side, whether it's male or female, and that person knows that the narcissist is in a relationship. In that case, that other supply is a narcissist because they have no empathy for you. They're just trying to meet their own selfish needs by being with the narcissist. Then in that case, they are narcissistic and they are not a victim because they knew what was going on. And the funny thing is when the narcissist leaves, let's say the married person and they go with the person they were having the affair with, what do you think happens down the line with that? They may get with that new person, but they're going to be cheating on that new person. Okay. They're going to be cheating on the new supply, just like they were cheating on you. And this is what a, you know, the person that's having the affair, you know, the other supply doesn't realize that if the narcissist could cheat on their husband or wife, they're going to cheat on you down the road 99.9% .9 of the time. Okay. Why? Because they have no morals and values and they're out for themselves and out for the next best thing. Okay. So those people get screwed as well. They get screwed as well when they think that they're being slick by going with the narcissist and they're trying to win the narcissist from you because maybe they're in competition. They need that ego boost as well. So they're trying to, you know, they're having an affair with the narcissist and they're trying to win the narcissist over because they want to feel superior to you. So they're narcissistic as well if they know about you, but rest, rest assured that they will get it back in the end because that's the law of life. When you spit into the wind, it's going to come back and hit you in the face. And that's exactly what happens to these type of other supply or new supply that knew about you. Okay. That narcissist is going to do exactly to them what they did to you. Okay. So what goes around comes around. So I hope that helps you to understand about new supply and how it works and how it's a cycle. And even if they stay in that long-term relationship, it's still, there's still going to be toxicity there. And if it's lasting, the new supply is putting up with a lot of bullshit. Okay. 
The bottom line is you want to live your life. You want to live your life in peace and happy and not deal with somebody who's a basic asshole, all right? And that new supply is going to have to put up with that unless they give the boot to the narcissist and then the narcissist will just do the same thing with somebody else, all right? So you're moving forward and the narcissist is moving in a circle, okay? So I hope that helps you guys. If it does, hit the subscribe button and share the podcast and have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram the game exp 123 okay and have a great day mm-hmm.